Sarah Cook, my co-commentator from Australia. Please. I'm Martin Cross, has described Headington Schools as the strongest Attention. junior women's rowing programme in the country. And we're away in this first race. And Gloucester just steering over towards Temple Island. We've seen with a little bit more flow this year that a lot of crews have been pushed out as they come past Temple Island into the middle. There's been a huge number of crashes and accidents. It's been a fairly lively regatta from that perspective. So you can just see the Gloucester crew there being pushed out into the middle by the stream. So they'll need to correct their steering. You can get disqualified for moving off your station. So we're looking at uh, Brani Lawrence there, the stroke of the Gloucester crew. She's one of the... Uh, Two women in this boat who will be going to junior trials with uh, the strongest sculler, Francis Russell, who is behind Bryony in the three seat. That is a very encouraging early race for Gloucester. They may have won this contest, Sarah, in the last couple of years, but this quadruple is not as fast as the ones that won last year. Gloucester having a really aggressive start here. They're moving out to about a canvas lead over Headington. So despite that steering that they had to make, every time you're on the rudder like that, it does slow the boat down. So it's not something you, you want to be doing. You want to need, uh, sorry, you need to get that line straight to go as quickly as possible. But they've recovered well. They do have the slight advantage. We can see the Gloucester crew on screen there in the bow seat, Freya Webb, two seat Zoe Adamson, Francis Russell and Bryony Lawrence in stroke seat. Yeah, it's strange a little bit that uh, Bryony Lawrence and Francis Russell will be uh, junior trialling for the World Championships in sweep. That's just one blade. But here with two, I guess with Gloucester's heritage, they train all year round in singles. Well, these girls from Gloucester, they were actually gold medalists at the National Schools Regatta Championship in the Coxes Fours. So they changed over to the quad just for this event. Uh, so, of course, moving from one oar to two oars. But we've seen a good little move just on screen there by Headington. They've just pushed their bow up to level. The Gloucester girls were sitting about a canvas up, but Headington getting themselves back into the mix and onto terms with Gloucester. So there's a great shot from our camera of uh, Katie King-Smith, such an experienced sculler. She will be going to junior trials in the double skull with the bow woman in the boat, Danielle Semple. She's on the right of your picture in the Headington crew in the uh, dark blue. I was talking talk to Tom Pattix, there's the Headington crew again, uh, Gloucester Rowing Club coach. I said, what, what do you reckon about this race, Tom? And he said, well, you know, Headington must be the favourites. They were three seconds quicker to the barrier in that tough race they had yesterday against Warrington Rowing Club. But uh, Gloucester have not been outgunned early doors. No, I watched both of the semi-finals for these crews yesterday. And they're such class acts, both of them. I didn't know which way to hedge my bets coming into today's racing. I think it'll be very tight all the way down the course. We've seen the lead change a couple of times already. So uh, this is going to become quite the race as we progress down the track. Looking at those boats, nice flat stern, which is running smoothly, which indicates that the dry phase is really being executed well. Blades going in without too much force and just those four women in the Gloucester boat locking their legs together. And you look at the uh, Headington boat, and that's a really smooth sweep. Perhaps a little bit more aggressivity, early phase of the stroke, Sarah. Yeah, I really like the way that the Headington girls were. I was watching them yesterday, and they have a fluidity about them. Uh, and, and their stroke woman there, uh, Katie of King course, Smith. Katie King-Smith. I really like what she does. She just looks really unflappable in her rhythm. She's actually got her eyes closed, it looks like, there. Uh, just zoning out almost and just laying down that rhythm and it's so important in a stroke seat that you're able just to pump out the same stroke over and over again particularly in the quad which is such a rhythm boat well the coaches uh, watching in the boat behind tom paddocks for gloucester hartbury and ryan domain the south african who has run such a fantastic program at headington school and uh, both of them i think will be pleased at this headington are in a great rhythm but gloucester have not let the uh well, the, the favourites, I guess, slightly bigger crew dominate them. And look at this little move here by Gloucester, now taking the advantage over Headington. So this is about the third time we've seen the lead change so far in this race. I mean, look how close these two boats are all the way down the track. It just shows the quality of both of these crews, and it's sad that one of them will have to walk away with nothing from today. It is, and this is a fantastic race to open finals day at the 177th edition of Henley Royal Regatta. We're looking at the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup for junior women's quadruple skulls. And Headington, who came into this race as favourites, definitely the faster time in the semi-final. 
are down against Gloucester, the underdogs. They have won it in the past two years, but this is not a strong crew, just one returner and slightly less powerful and strong on the ergometers. Average ergo score over the 2K test of about uh, 7.18, Tom Paddix was telling me. So he said these women have to do it by flow and rhythm and synchronicity, Sarah. They do look very aggressive through the back end there. I think Headington have a nice flow to what they're doing, but certainly the way that Gloucester rose, it looks stronger through the water. It's not quite as smooth, but they're laying down that power, and we saw a really aggressive move from them there. Tactically, what do you think these girls would have been aiming to do? They'd know that they were perhaps going in as underdogs, the Gloucester crew uh, to Headington. What would you have been talking about to these girls going into this race? You've got to compete early on. I think Tom Patrick's will have known Katie King-Smith there, the pain on her face. A little look across from uh, Lydia Curry in the two-seat. That's the first time I've seen a look out, and uh, that's an interesting lead. But, you know, Gloucester did not allow Headington's early pace to dominate. And then the tactics as they came through the halfway point at Fawley, if you're in contact, really start to lay it down there. And this is a decisive move, Sarah. A really aggressive move there. A great job by these two crews. Really patient, I think, for Gloucester to just sit side by side. And then when they made the call to go, they did it in a matter of strokes. And now they have a very decisive lead. I think it's about a length over Headington as they come towards the enclosures and now it's going to start getting noisy and they're running out of length if Headington want to make an attack. Yeah, they have got time, Headington, and uh, the Gloucester women will be thinking this is not a job done yet. That is a good lead, but it's not a decisive lead if the Headington girls can sprint. And their coach, Ryan Domain, well, he took them out of a uh, training camp where they had geography field trip in Switzerland so they could all row there. Came back to the regatta on Wednesday at 3.15am to compete here and they've been fantastic ever since. But this Gloucester crew absolutely showing the way home. Beautiful movement together, flexibility, fluidity and look at the stern of that boat, Sarah. Yeah, look at Bryony Lawrence there in the stroke seat. We saw a little grimace there, she gritted her teeth as the umpires just warning the, the two crews, warning Gloucester to stay in their station and to not move across in front of Headington. They're starting to get a little pinch there on the barrier. But Headington, they're making a move. Here they go. They're pushing the rate up as the crowd starts to cheer. It's going to come down to a final sprint. Gloucester just have the advantage. So the Gloucester girls, average weight of 10 stone 6. Headington, uh, sorry, Gloucester 10 stone 12. Headington 10 stone 6. But it's the Gloucester rank who are fighting off every single attack from the Oxfordshire School. This will be three wins in a row in the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup for the Gloucester Club. It is a sensational race. They dominated through the middle. I don't think anybody expected that. Headington, the favourites, have been beaten. Gloucester Rowing Club win the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup for the third year in a row. Headington, one length behind. And what a race to open the programme, Sarah.